This video is about sine and cosine of complementary angles. We're talking about how sine and cosine are related. We're also hitting two CCRSM standards. Let's get started. Let's start by talking about the relationship between sine and cosine. Okay, first we have a right triangle here with all three lengths given. Okay, and I'm going to find the sine, cosine, and tangent for angle A. Okay, now looking at angle A, well, let's back up. For this right triangle, 29 is the hypotenuse. Okay, looking at angle A, 20 is the leg adjacent to angle A. This is the adjacent. And 21 is on the opposite side from the angle A. This is the opposite. And we can use our mnemonic, so ka toa, um, to think about the sine and cosine and tangent ratios for angle A. Okay, the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, or 21 over 29. The cosine ratio for angle A is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is 20 over 29. And the tangent ratio for angle A is the opposite over the adjacent, or 21 over 20. Okay, now if I switch acute angles and look at angle B over here, then, let's see here, the hypotenuse stays the same. Okay, I'll do this in green so it's a bit different. The hypotenuse stays the same, but the adjacent, the one next to angle B, the leg adjacent to angle B, is now 21. This is now the adjacent. Okay, and the leg opposite of angle B whoop, over here is over here. So that kind of changes a little bit. Um, and we'll talk about why that's important in a little bit. Um, the sine of angle B, I'm looking at the green um, notation here, the sine of B is the opposite of B over the hypotenuse, which is 20 over 29. The cosine of angle B is 21 over 29, and the tangent of B is the opposite over the adjacent, or 20 over 21. Okay, now, what do you notice about these ratios? What is the same? Um, what seems to be related? Um, you might notice that the sine of A is the same as the cosine of B. Those are both 21 over 29. And the cosine of A is the sine of B. Those are both 20 over 29. So we might notice that the sine of A is equal to the cosine of B, and the cosine of A is equal to the sine of B. Okay, it's an important thing to notice. The other thing that you can notice is that tangent of A and tangent of B are reciprocals of each other. They're like, you flip the fraction over. Um, so the tangent of A is the reciprocal of tangent B. Okay, actually I, sh I should say angle A. Well, I think it's fine because tan A is a ratio. Okay, those are two things you can notice. Now, why does this pattern hold? Okay, why do we have the sine of A is the cosine of B and the cosine of A is the sine of B? And what it boils down to is the fact that this switching, as you switch the angles, the, the, the legs also switch, that's at the root of why this happens. Okay, so because the let me pick a new color here because the, the side opposite of A is the adjacent to B. And similarly, the leg opposite of angle B is adjacent to angle A. Okay, so because we switch the legs, as we switch the angles, the sine of A is the same as the cosine of B, and the cosine of A is the sine of B. Also, that's why the tangent um, is the reciprocal as well, because of that switching that happens. 
So that's how they're related. Um, let me also pair with that idea um, also how those two angles are related to each other. Okay, And we're coming back to a word that we talked about really early in the school year about complements. Okay, Not like a, hey, you look nice today, but complements as in like supplements. Okay, um, Two complementary angles are angles that add to be 90 degrees. Okay, so complements are angles that add to be 90 degrees. So if I asked you to find angle X here, you could take 90 plus 21 and subtract from 180 um, and find angle X. But because this angle is 90 degrees and the whole triangle adds to 180, these two would be complements. They add to be 90 degrees. So 90 minus 21 is 69 degrees, and that's what angle X is. Okay, these two angles as well will add to be 90 degrees. So 90 minus 47.5 is 42.5 degrees. Okay, because um, they're complements. Okay, now um, I've thrown in here a, a Greek letter of alpha, which is kind of new. Um, sorry to kind of do that, but um, that's also on the park assessment. Um, so I can write angle Z in terms of alpha. And it's 90 minus whatever alpha is, so I'll do 90, 90 minus alpha, okay? Or if I call this, you know, um, for angle V would be 90 minus angle T, for example, okay? When you see this 90 minus something, okay, that's talking about the complement, um, the the other acute angle in the right triangle. Okay, we'll look at two problems that has to do with that idea in a little bit. But before I get there, let me talk about complements um, and specifically this CO in complements. Okay, let me return to this discussion before, sine and cosine. The reason why cosine is called cosine is because it is the sign of the complement. Uh, okay, so the, the um, cosine of A is the sign of the complement of A. Okay, so because they're complements, we get the, the co in front of sine. That's how, why it's called cosine. Okay, here's two problems that kind of pull all these ideas together from the Park assessment. Um, number one, the degree measure of an angle in a right triangle is x. Okay, so I'm going to draw here. We have a right triangle, and the degree measure of one of the angles, I just picked that one, to be x. And the sine of x is one-third. Well, our mnemonic is sol ka toa. Soka toa. So the sine ratio is the opposite of x, and this is opposite of x as 1, and the hypotenuse is over here, and so that's 3. So 1 third is the sine ratio of x. So I've kind of put in here the lengths of opposite and hypotenuse. So that kind of mirrors um, that ratio for x. Okay, now the question is which of these expressions are also equal to one third. Now, first of all, this length down here, um, I'll just call it y. I don't know what y is. Um, I could find it with the Pythagorean theorem, but my point is it's not going to be one. Okay, it's not going to be one. So the cosine of x is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. It's not one third. Okay, in letter B. Um, I don't know what x minus 45 is, if that's even useful to us, or 45 over minus x, or 60 minus x. Those aren't really useful, but I notice, hey, 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 I got x, 90 minus x, and that is important to me. Okay, 90 minus x means it's the complement, the other acute angle to x, and so this angle up here is 90 minus x. They're talking about this angle right here. So what's the cosine of that angle? Well, it's the adjacent to that angle divided by the hypotenuse, which is um, one third. That is one third, and so this is also equal to one third. Okay, it is pretty abstract. Okay, um, but that's you know what we're teaching right now. 
Okay, number two, this is the last one we'll do in this video. The figure, the figure shows right triangle ABC, and as a side comment, I hate the fact that C is not the hypotenuse, um, but I didn't make the problem. Okay, so I have triangle ABC, um, and that's there. Which of, the follow, uh, which of the listed values are equal to the sine of B? Well, the sine of B is the opposite over the hypotenuse of angle B. So for angle B, um, the opposite is B, and the hypotenuse is A. So I get B over A. Okay, so B over A, this is pretty easy. Check. That's the same as the sine of B. It's B over A. Okay? Now, which of the D, E, F, and G are also equal to the sine of B? Well, um, I know that we just learned that the sine of B is the same as the cosine of C, the other acute angle. So that's going to be true, right? Okay. And I've just taught you that when you see 90 minus B, you say, no, 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 not that angle. It's the complement of B, which is angle C. And so what this is really saying is the cosine of angle C. Okay, and the cosine of C is the sine of B. Okay, there's lots of C's and B's that are getting thrown around here, but that is also the same as the cosine of C, as you can see in the, the thing above. Okay, and um, if you look here the, at G, when you see ah, 90 minus C, that's not talking about C, it's talking about the complement of C, which is angle B. So what is sine of angle B? Well, it's the same as the sine of angle B. That must also be true. Okay, so these are this is a pretty abstract concept and some pretty abstract applications of the idea. Okay, but hopefully you have some sense of the idea that the cosine of one angle is the sine of its complement. Okay, and that the 90 minus something is talking about the complement. Those are some important pieces to get from this video. All right, this video was about the sine and cosine of complementary angles, talking about how the sine of A is the same as the cosine of B, and also that those are complements, and that's where the name cosine comes from. Thank you so much for watching.